Hey Khan, are you sure this is a good idea? Yeah, of course. Why? I don't know. It just seems a tad risky to get a few extra credit points from Mr. Brower. Are you sure there's no other way to show projectile motion? Look, it's completely safe. Trust me. Well, could you at least take a few steps back? Fine. This honestly doesn't seem much safer. Look, I swear it's completely safe. I did all the math. You and I are 25 feet apart. The apple is 6.3 feet above the ground, while the arrow is 5.8 feet above the ground. The arrow is being fired at 23 degrees. We can set up it with that equation as distance equals half of acceleration due to gravity multiplied by time squared plus initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by time plus our original height. Because our time equals our distance over our initial velocity in the x direction, and the initial velocity in the x direction equals the cosine 23 degrees times initial velocity, we can say that time equals 25 feet over the cosine of 23 degrees times initial velocity. This allows us to set up the equation. 6.3 equals negative 16.08 times 25 over the cosine of 23 degrees times initial velocity squared plus the sine of 23 degrees times initial velocity times 25 over the cosine of 23 degrees times initial velocity plus 5.8. After multiplying, dividing, canceling out, simplifying, and other stupid math sh we find that our initial velocity is 34.2 feet per second. That means that as long as I fire the arrow at a velocity of 34.2 feet per second, the arrow will hit the apple right off your delicate little head. It's that simple. You didn't account for wind resistance. Eh, negligible. Wait, seriously, I don't think I can do this. Come on, I really need this extra credit in physics. I have a D in that class right now. How? I, uh, failed the projectile motion quiz. Fine, let's get it over with. Great, you're awake. How's it going, buddy? What happened? Don't worry about it. It's not important. The important thing is... What? Mr. Brown gave us tons of extra credit! <laughs>